Hey guys, how are you? I'm sure you guys are doing great. So guys, today in this video, we will be discussing about STP protocol versus RSTP protocol. So what is STP protocol? What is RSTP protocol? Where these protocols are used and how these protocols are, you know, uh, important in the local area network and why these protocol so much important in the local area network. We'll discuss the entire thing in depth. So watch this video. Till then, my name is Manjit Singh and you are watching your own channel that is Tech Guru Manjit. So let's get started. So let me design one network here. Say for example, I have switch. This is the switch number one. So I have connected this switch number one with the switch number two. Now with the switch number one, I have two users connected, right? So I have these two users connected. With switch number two, I have one normal user and one server connected to switch number two. So this is server or maybe you can say this is the application server or, or this application server are you know used by the every user with connected to switch number one and switch number two. Now being a network engineer, if we have created this topology, so what will happen until there is no problem it will work perfectly fine the moment this link goes down so in that case as switch number one the user which are connected to switch number one they will not be able to access the server right so if they are not able to access able to access the server so that definitely the uh, work will hamper here so being a network engineer, what I have done is I have connected one more cable to switch number one and switch number two to provide redundancy, right? So if these both these switches are manageable switch, then in that case, of course, I can connect like this. If both these switches are unmanaged, in that case, I will not be able to provide redundancy because uh, in the unmanaged switches, there is no protocol called STP or RSTP, right? So now these both these switches are manageable. So I can easily uh, provide redundancy like this. So say for example, switch number one is also configured STP and switch number two is also having a STP protocol. What STP protocol will do? The moment I'll collect the second link, it will analyze the network between switch number one and switch number two. It will allow one link to transfer the data and another link to, you know, on blocking stage. Say, for example, this port is on now blocking stage. Why it is on blocking stage? Because if uh, it will not put on blocking stage, it will create loop here to avoid that loop stp protocol will uh, you know uh, put this uh, port into blocking stage so there are certain uh, parameters on based on that it will analyze which port to put on blocking stage now suppose this port is on blocking stage right so the data is transferring uh, from the above link say now the above link has some issues technical issues due to the above link is now, now not able to transfer the data. The moment data stops transferring, STP protocol will analyze why it is not transferring the data. If it found that some issues are there, it will unblock the port which are on blocking stage. So the time between blocking and forwarding to time between blocking and forwarding is 30 second in STP protocol, which means if the above link goes down, right, this user which are connected to switch number one, they will experience the network down for 30 seconds. For 30 seconds, they will not be able to access the server application, but after 30 seconds, STP protocol will automatically put unblocking a uh, blocking port into forwarding. So after that, th after 30 seconds, it will be on forwarding stage. So the data will start transferring from 
lower link right but being a network engineer or maybe uh, being a end user you don't want that to uh, this switch number one user should experience 30 second downtime so in in that case what you can do is you can do you can use rstp protocol now rstp protocol will also do this and same entire thing the only difference with the with using the rstp protocol it will also put this uh, one port on blocking stage no doubt on that part so if rstp protocol analyze that okay the above link is now not able to transfer data between switch number one and switch number two it will unblock the blocking port right but it will take the time less than 10 seconds right RSTP will take less than 10 seconds to you know uh, change the status of blocking port to forwarding stage but STP protocol will take 30 seconds so you can see the huge difference between the time right now if only the 10 seconds less than 10 seconds so switch number one uh, the user which are connected to switch number one they even don't understand whether the uh, network issues are there or not because 10 less than 10 seconds is nothing right so these are the benefit of S rstp protocol and the pro uh, drawback of stp protocol now let us understand the rstp and uh, stp why this time gap is there so here is the stp here is the rstp so stp uh, work on ieee standard that is 802.1d rstp work on ieee standard that is 802.1w so these are the ieee standards now the moment you put your switch power on the first stage of that particular switch is on disable this is the these are the uh, port status right first the moment you power on the switch the port are into disable stage after that second stage is blocking third stage is listening fourth stage is uh, learning and final fifth stage is forwarding the data so listening and learning so these are the two uh, stages where 15 seconds for listening stage 15 seconds for learning stage so the moment your stp protocol analyze the cable which was tra transferring data is now not able to transfer the data it will unblock the uh, blocking stage so uh, blocking port so the port status will start from here 15 seconds for listening 15 seconds for learning so these are 30 seconds right between listening to forwarding now let us understand the uh, stages of rstp protocol so rstp is using only three stages one is discarding second is learning and third is forwarding stage so disable blocking and listening these three stages are covered under discard right so if rstp analyze okay now the link is not able to transfer data it will unblock the block port so the stage of directly starts from listening so it will take less than 10 seconds and after that forwarding stage is enabled which means the moment your switch reach on forwarding stage user data will start uh, moving from one network device to another network device so guys this is the difference between stp and rstp protocol so i hope you guys understood that uh, how stp works and uh, uh, how rstp works so which protocol to be used and uh, when you can if you don't want if you don't have any issues 
uh, for 30 seconds downtime, then in that case you can use STP protocol. If you are running some apply centralized application, in that case I would say you should use RSTP protocol. So guys, I hope this video is enhancing your knowledge. You are learning something. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Or uh, don't forget to share with your friend circle who are into IT domain. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that every time I'll upload the video, you get notified. That's all for this video, guys. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe, stay at home. Goodbye.